Hi, I'm Mel and welcome back or welcome to my channel. If you are new, please subscribe and I thank each and every one of you who has subscribed so far. And if you subscribe today, I thank you too. So as part of my self-care goals this year and like my New Year's resolution, I want to read a book a week or maybe more if I'm on holiday, like I'll probably read a bit more. If I sound a bit funny also through this video or look a bit wishy-washy, I... I'm not very well at the moment, I've got a bit of a virus. We are thinking it could potentially be slap face, but we are not sure because that's mainly in children, not adults. But I've had it before as well, so we're not really sure, but I've been off sick, so this is Saturday, so when I'm filming this is Saturday anyway, so I was off Thursday, Friday, um, and I was just bed bound, I just could not move. I felt sick, well I still feel sick and stuff like that, but I was needing to film this anyway. So this is why I'm at my mum and dad's for the weekend. And I've just been told that tomorrow, even though my grandma's coming, that I might have to go home or just eat in a different room so I didn't give anyone else this virus. But there we go. So for part of my self care like goals, I've wanted to read um, a book each week basically. And between the hour before bed basically, I go through my journals, write, update my journals, and then I probably read it for about half an hour, 45 minutes every night, unless I'm out or, or something, or I swap it to the hour before if I've got a program on like the hour before I go to bed. But, so this is my, what I'll probably do most months unless I completely fail my, uh, resolution and goals next month but this is what I have got I've got three of them here one of them my granddad has got because he's then reading it but I have read four books this month or the last four weeks and I'm going to review them now with you so the first book I am reviewing or telling you about is not an adult book but I was very into Jacqueline Wilson as a child and especially Tracy Beaker so my sister got me this for Christmas and it's Jacqueline Wilson's My Mum Tracy Beaker. Now my friend actually wants to borrow this off me so I'll give it to her when I see her. But this was really good. Obviously it's a child's book but you still could relate to it and understand it understood all the characters etc because it's the same characters plus more in this book than it is in like Tracy Beaker and stuff like that but I just found this an easy read I wanted to pick it up all the time and read it and I wanted to you know it was a good story it was about the little girl and her mum who's was well, Tracy Be who is Tracy Beaker and their life really um, and I don't really want to give much away but it is about them, Cam still in it from when she, obviously she's Tracy Beaker's foster mum. Um, and then there's other characters in it as well, like Justine Littlewood appears in it for a little while. But I would say if you're not really into reading as an adult, then, which I'm really not, this is definitely a pick up um, and can't stop reading book. And... I really enjoyed it. It was exactly like reading my a book when I was little of Jacqueline Wilson's. Um, and I'm not ashamed that I've just read a kid's book or a kid's book's part of it. But it's about their life and her Tracy meeting a boyfriend and their life like adapting to that. And then how Jess, Jess is Tracy Beaker's um, daughter her life through school and having Tracy as a mum basically but I would give this book out of 10 I'd probably give it I'll probably actually give it a 10 out of 10 or a 9 out of 10 um, and if there was another one like this in the future I would pick it up and buy it I'd pick it up and read it so that is definitely probably a 9 out of 10 and I would definitely read that so if you like the little if you like Jacqueline Wilson basically then you'd love that book. The next one I haven't got with me because my granddad is borrowing it and I opened this on Christmas day as well and that is The Tattooist of Auschwitz. I think that is how you say it. And as soon as I opened that my granddad was like oh I'd like to read that after you. Again it was a book that I could pick up and I wouldn't want to put down. I just wanted to keep reading it. And I'm not really one in for into history and stuff like that, but at school I like the Anne Frank and learning bits of stuff, bits of history like that. 
um, and it was about a guy, it was a Polish guy, I'm pretty sure he was Polish. I'm pretty sure he was Polish. The lady was from Slovakia as well and it's about his life in Auschwitz and how he he nominate like he volunteered himself to go to Auschwitz and then it's a bit of like a romance story but it's about his life in Auschwitz he becomes the tattooer so the person that tattoos all of their people's numbers on and he because he can speak multiple languages he is a be he he is respected more by the Germans and he gets on really well and it's a bit of a lo like a romantic story as well and it's about them their whole life in um the Auschwitz camp and then going on to to outside as well it's literally like the last chapters the outside or a couple of chapters and how they meet up again stuff like that but that was such a good story it is war based basically and obviously about Auschwitz but it's a romance story as well so at the same time it is good for people that like romance stories but it also has like interesting facts in it that I found out about Auschwitz at the same time again I, that again it was a pick me up and I just literally would keep hold of it and not let go so for that book I'd give it a 10 out of 10 definitely and for the books I've now got on my Amazon like save for later I have got quite a few more war based or like the olden time based history based books um, because I really enjoyed that. Then next up I have got Feminists Don't Wear Pink and Other Lies and this is literally about different feminists and their stories basically and I thought I'd read this because I well at first I found it interesting and I wanted to hit, read about different people's stories and this book is highly recommended from other people but I think I probably got about halfway and I was getting bored of literally like two pages per person and learning about their ways of being a feminist there is some really good stories in it but there's also at the same time some that I'm like this is pointless so for this uh, book I would recommend it if you want to read or if you read one person's a week I'd say then you'd be all right I wouldn't pay the 12.99 for it that I paid for it I would probably have brought this again if I it was like a fiver max it's not worth the 12 pound or in my view it isn't anyway and I would probably give it about a six out of ten some of the stories are really interesting and their lives as a feminist what they think a feminist feminist is etc i think that is some of them are really good but some of them are really strange at the same time so that's why i didn't find them all amazing but if you would like to i'd probably pick this up as something you'd read once a week rather than like a proper story and then finally the book the last book I read was working with mindfulness and obviously this brings into like self-care element of my um, goals and stuff like that but this is to help me be help me be more mindful and better myself for the future basically and there's some ups and downs in my life at the moment and obviously I'm not very well so I'm struggling a little bit at the moment with this virus and it doesn't look like I've got slap face at the moment I've ever so slightly but I seem to get this big right red red blotchy face and literally I've got no energy but with that out the way I think that it would definitely be interesting for this book for someone that is wanting to help themselves with mindfulness in fact I read like on holidays when I read normally so for me to read lots of books is good for me and we was talking about 
what was we talking about reading? What was we talking about? I can't think what we were talking about at work the other day, but it came onto the story of work, like books at the moment. Well, we must have been talking about this book because I was talking about being mindful at work and this first chapter is about being mindful at work and how various people went on different courses to get the like learn mindfulness and see if it helped them over six weeks um and my well one of the people i sit with she asked me what book i was reading at the moment because i read eve of man which was an amazing book and then she read it and she thought it was brilliant too so she wanted to read that one on holiday coming up like the next one which isn't released in time and i was like reading i'm reading this and she was like what but then obviously I gave her other ideas of what i'd read and what i know is out there along the lines of eve of man but this is just not to like it's basically for every element in your life how you can look at it and be more mindful around your day or your life so I just obviously mentioned work it's taught it's teaching you to stay calm in like harder situations like focused you know just the power of being mindful and obviously you need to have that balance of say like the work life balance you need that rather than not than having just like cram packed everything's about work and I would never ever do that. I definitely need my work work life balance. And I know I work more because I've worked through you like for YouTube, well myself, YouTube blog a lot as well. But I still enjoy that and that element of that is my life as well as going out with my friends and family, etc. But to be mindful is really clever, I guess, and working out how you can be mindful around others and stuff like that this also gives you exercises to do to be more mindful and so it's more of an exercise book or like a guide rather than a novel or anything like that it's a bit like the feminists don't wear pink which you could work through each week doing a, a chapter basically um i did think it was really good it has helped me and again i've read it in a week but I did go through like the steps. I'm just trying to find you an exercise. Oh. So here's like unleashing your creative without the space hopper. So refresh your skills, seek out different, differing, differing perspectives. Immerse yourself in an unfamiliar experience. Take your time and do not rush creative decisions. And there's all different like things you have to do underneath it but there's like loads each thing like connecting the dots uh and this is glass building person what do you think tool maybe and then it's curious so it is it's not just reading it's like activities too which does help you and obviously with the self-care and the mindfulness well the mindfulness brings the self-care element into it and I did want to read some books not just novels but books like this to help me not just have that wind down wind down time but to help me with myself and bettering myself and they are my four books for January I was going to say December then for January I had well actually this mindfulness book I would probably give a seven out of ten seven or an eight i think it was really good it has helped me feel more mindfulness but it also i don't know there was like activities in it for the work side again that was for management to see to work across a team so some of that wasn't as as helpful because i'm not a manager of a team so but yeah um so there are my four books for january what one out of there all four of them would you like to read the most and have you read any books this for january what book has been your favorite you have read because i am looking for inspiration for well it'll be march now please also give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe push that notification bell because i post on mondays wednesdays and saturdays at 6 p.m great british time with the occasional bonus video 
Thanks for watching. Bye.